adult too. Um, I have two blessed daughters, Olua Dubari and Ayama Kose. Um, first of all, I'll say I'm a caterer, followed by being a decorator, and I have a flower shop as well. Um, I think when you love somebody, when you love something, or when you love to do something, your heart is just there. So I kind of structure myself. Uh, Monday and Tuesday is for flowers. Um, Wednesday and Thursday, maybe for rentals, you just have meetings with them. That one is very easy. And um, catering, that's a weekend party. So it depends on how you that, That's where I juggle mine. And how have you enjoyed doing this? Hmm. I enjoy doing the three because um, I'll also say it again because I love what I do. But I'll say it is strenuous. That's the truth. That's the truth. Um, time consuming, energy consuming. But well, I'll just say it is what it is. Whatever you love, it's just great time for. That's all. And how do you think of the names? Okay. Bush Poppies was my husband's um, nickname when he was in Ife. And when I was supposed to start my business, I, it was difficult to register a business name then. So I just asked him for the name he had um, registered, and it was Hush Puppies. And that was how I stole his name. And I never left it. Well, after about 15 years, um, Hush Puppies that sell shoes in America came into Nigeria and started tossing with those that they registered Hush Puppies in Nigeria before us. So um, I just thought to myself, instead of going back and forth, let's just change the name. Um, because even at times people call it, oh, do you sell um, poppies? Or they just walk into the shop, oh, do you have poppies? And like, for crying out loud, we don't sell poppies. So I think, oh, we just changed it to Hush and Hush. And um, when the name was so Hush Poppies, we're doing catering as well. So I just thought to myself that, why don't you just separate the businesses? You have Hush Poppies for um, decorative items and decorations, and you have another name for the kitchen outfit, so they don't kind of clash. Okay. So that's how we came about the name Sweethearts, as the Yoruba goes or what do. Um, so that's how we bettered Sweethearts for outdoor catering and we did Hush Poppies for the decoration firm. So. And then what's For the third one. It's a Hush Poppies, so under Hush Poppies, on that. Now you know we left the name Hush Poppies. So under Hush and Hush, you have Hush and Hush florals and events, okay. and you have Hush and Hush party rentals. So when you say party rentals, we have a market that can sit like 2,000 people. We have um, chalvary chairs, we have the executive chairs, we have um, we have tables, we have canopies, we have easels, we have a full package for a wedding. Like, for example, you have an event center. We can set up like that. We have it. Well, ours is movable. It goes within Lagos, it goes outside Lagos, so Depends on where you want to set it up. So, what well, you do you interest in that way? Or do you for Um, okay. When we're in the liquid room, you know, we're into, I was selling decorative items, I was doing decorations for um, firms, MTN. Um, well, you know, people just walk in and they're like, Do you do rentals? I'm like, I don't do it. We have a lot of orders on rentals. Um, but after a while, I decided to look for um, rental outfits and I started giving them the job. You know, by the point in time, I just got, even what they were chatting was more than the decoration we were doing. I was like, ah, what's going on here? But that's not even the point. When we moved to Lekki here, I just saw people kept on coming, find the white flowers. They said, Do you do rental? Like, why do people keep asking for these rentals? Then I sat down to think about it that when you're in, a, in an area, and customers keep asking for a certain thing, which means that in that area, that's what you need to sell. You don't have to say because what you're selling in area A, B, C should go for area D. So I decided to restructure. I was starting doing rentals little by little. And I discovered that the thing was going, and that's how it just grew. It wasn't like it was my intention. No, customers give us what to sell. Um, the rental now, I've done it for like five years. The um, decoration. I've had, I think I've done decoration since 1998. 1998. So, um, for those people who are not so, what would it be? Uh, 
and say to them in terms of the services that we provide. Okay. For those who are watching me, and for those who are listening, and looking up at the same time, <laughs> we are into, we have a flower shop, so um, we would love for you to patronize us. Um, we have a rental outfit in Lekki. Um, if you have a party, please do call on us. We will not disappoint you. We will deliver on time, and um, you'll be happy. You glad you you be glad you did call us. Um, we are also into catering, outdoor catering. You want like a free cost meal, you want a tea break, we are here for you. Just call us and we'll be there. And the most important thing is that uh, we have um, an association for caterers in Nigeria, whereby you have outdoor caterers, you have food stylists, you have the dessert people, you have the small shops people, and guess what? I am the chairperson of that association. So you should know that, you, um, how do I say? You have rest of mind, giving us your job to do. And we will deliver. Just trust us. We will deliver. Tell us a bit about this new year association. What do you think? Hmm. For the new year association, I have a lot to do. I'm trying to empower a lot of women because um, I've come to realize that most of us there are women. And um, I'm glad that women are no longer sitting at home waiting for their husbands to sponsor what they'll be doing. But women are coming outside to work and then they're leaving. So um, we've had so many plans and we are still doing it. We're supposed to be having so many trainings, having training on how to go about your business, trainings on how to um, render customer service to your customers, training on how to um, keep your food under the right temperature, training on for, training for the waiters that we'll be using because we've discovered that tra uh, waiters don't have manners. I'm trying to be honest. They're mannerless. They take money at parties. Um, how they're supposed to serve, they don't know how to serve. You set from the right, you pack from the left, they don't know how to set the table, they don't know how to do the proper table setting, they don't know how to do napkin folds. You should know how to do all those things. You should know how to stand when you're when you're not serving. You should know how to wait on your customers. They don't know all those things. So we're trying to bring it into their knowledge that you have to love what you're doing to be able to deliver what is right. But as long as you don't love what you're doing, you not deliver what's right. So we have all those trainings um, in the pipeline for the waiters and for the people doing business. And at the same time, we are trying to um, get loans for them because some of them love what they're doing, but they don't know where to get the phones from. So I'm speaking to banks, you know, so that they will come out and help women and give us at a reasonable price, but loan as a reasonable price. Then I'm talking to some property owners um, to help us restructure payments so that they will get a property for themselves. Even if it's going to be for the office unit, I would love for them to do that. Um, I'm speaking to somebody that we're speaking on insurance, we're speaking with insurance companies so that they can insure their products. A lot of them don't know that they have to insure their products. So we've spoken to an insurance company, they came during the induction and um, they're ready to help. We have um, also, um, we're talking to doctors because we discover that women work a lot. They take care of their, their husband, their children, their businesses, their home, but they themselves, the workhouse, they don't have time to take care of themselves. So we are speaking to doctors. Doctors will be coming to see us. You know, uh, maybe you need to talk about your eyes, your, a lot of women are carrying fibroid around without knowing, you know, so things like that are the things we're putting in place for them. And again, and um, we decided to be buying things in bulk instead of buying things in Nigeria. If you can afford it, you want to buy tablecloths, all of us will come together. We contribute the money, we get the factory, and we order for it. It makes things cheaper for us. And when we want to buy here as well, we buy things in bulk and everybody will divide it. So it's like a win win situation. And when, for instance, you're a caterer in Lagos and you want to work in um, Ife, all you need to do on the platform is to find out which caterer is in Ife. And you can leave Lagos without carrying anything. Nothing, and somebody's already waiting for you to help you. It's been we've been doing it, and it's been it's been fantastic. You can ask any caterer, ask any caterer. People do um, mondo. They've been doing ik ikiti, so people have been enjoying it, honestly. So it's a thing of joy to head um, such an association to work to work with um, formidable women like that. I think I kind of love it. Tell us a bit about the last event you had. 
the big one, very massive. Uh, that's for the induction. The induction. Yeah. Um, for the induction, I think God just took a turn around. I, I just wanted to do me, uh, something nice, something classy, something different from the regular that the other session has been having. So, um, what we did was find we invited the people that were being doctor. And we decided to bring in the veterans because um, I'm a Yoruba person, I'm a Yoruba girl. Um, it says if you don't honor who you're supposed to honor, things will not work well for you. So we decided. And um, we got a DJ, we did, DJ Jimmy Jack was a DJ, um, Sugar Band was there, Benga Deika was there, uh, Yabo just, just came in, you know. That we had a representative from the Commission of Agri uh, there as well. I will tell you, we had eight newspapers to cover the event. We had four TV stations. We had um, Arise TV, MITV. We had City People. We had um, TVC. We had two radio stations as well. It was awesome. I wasn't expecting it to be like this, but God made it bigger in his own way. Because by 8 o'clock, I promise you, the whole Shiba Center was filled with cars. Even the main road was full. There was nowhere for people to park. How they did it, I don't know. I was just hearing phone calls. Oh, I was coming. There's no way. I was coming. There's no way. You know, and um, people came from Abuja. People came from Port Harcourt, Enugu, Ibadan, Ogun. Somebody came from Ife. I was shocked. I was shocked. I will tell you that it can only be God. I, I, I only I only did what he told me to do and we had um, a team of people working as well where it was God and it was all over. You know, even during the event, people inside the hall were calling other caterers outside. Why are you not here? So people actually came to the entry point and wanted to pay to be a member. I said, that's not the way it works. No. So we have people, we have another WhatsApp group already and we have people paying, we have people joining that session. But the thing is that they have to be inducted next year. It can be this year. Because they have, they've been hearing about the benefit of what's going on there. You know, so it was... Um, like it, how many members? Um, for now, we have over 300. We inducted 270 on that day. 270. You know, so um, it was a great event. It was it was a glorious one. You can ask any Ketra now. They're saying they're proud to be Ketra. Because to me, I'm like, if doctors sit down and say, I am a doctor, an engineer sits down and say, I'm a, an engineer, uh, a banker says, with a tie, I'm a banker. A kitchen should be able to sit down, chest up, and say, I am a kitchen. It's the same thing. We all go to school to get a degree, you know, so there should be respect in all levels of what we do. So that's what we're trying to do, so that people earn respect in the services that they are rendering to people. You just don't look down on people thinking that, oh, they're just ordinary cooks or ordinary local. That's not what we're doing. So we've come here with a bang and we're here to stay. I was born in Lagos here, in Fadi. Um, I grew up in different parts of Lagos. I grew up in Fadi. My daddy is called Bobby Johnson. It's a tailor. Um, from there, I went to Ikeja. I stayed in Ikeja with my mom because they're divorced. Um, I grew up in Ikeja basically. Yeah. I schooled, oh, okay. We'll start that. I went to um, Mary Magdalene Nursery and Primary School on, um, in Fadi, on Onoya District, Fadi. Then I went to secondary school, I went to Remo Secondary School, Shagam. Then I went to Yaba Tech, Yaba College of Technology. Yeah. And what course? I saw the kitchen and hotel management. Oh. You only choose that at that time. Um, I. It wasn't that that was what that was what I loved. No, that was what I loved. Um, I was a science student and I was thinking of being a doctor. And um, I think somebody. I just saw blood. I was like, if I see blood and I'm dying, then when I get to the hospital, I'll die the more. So it's like, what other course can I study with my sciences without being a doctor? And he said, food tech. But when I got to the food tech um, department, the HOD told me not to study food tech because he's using catering to take care of his um, family. Yeah? 
that's Mr. Akumoka. Reluctantly, I listened to the man. He told me, say, study catering, say, I will regret it. So, um, when I went to the catering department, I was, you know, you'll be proud now. Your friends are in accountancy, banking, you are in catering, you know. Um, but with time, I was coming out tops in class. So, whenever people are having issues up there, he would tell them to go and look for Muni Ula Johnson. He told them, he told her to change her course, and she's doing so well. And people kept on coming to my um, department. Who is Muni Ula Johnson? I'm like, what the hell is it? Sorry, my word. What the hell is going on? But I got to know later that um, he was always using me as a good example of that. And um, I, I would say uh, I'm not regretting it, honestly. I, I never did. It's been good for me because of God. Because the one that gives the ability to make well. Yeah. So what would you advise to the other ladies out there who are still trying to know what to do or what to Who are look, looking for what to do, which direction? You know, there's an inner you. There's an inner you that you can listen to. Honestly, listen to it, it works for you. Because I've come to realize that because of what we see outside, we get distracted. Because of what you hear people say, you get distracted. But there's an inner you, there's a bigger you inside that speaks to you, that tells you what to do. That if you go this way, it's going to be possible. If you go that way, it's going to be possible. If you speak with A, B, C, D, it will work. Listen to that inner you. It sure does work. Trust God, it works. It works. And, it's, and, and, and again, you need to ask yourself, what do you really love to do? Because there are so many people that love to do things, but they're doing it for free. You know, that's the way God has said that he will bless you. He says, show me the works of your hand and I will bless you. He's, they've been doing it free of charge, but hey, you need to wake up. You really need to wake up. So everybody knows there's one thing or the other. Or maybe you need to speak to somebody. I ask questions. I speak to people. But it doesn't mean that what you're telling me is what I will do. I go home and sleep about it. I think about it. Will it work for me or not? If it's going to work for me, I will take it. If I know it's not going to work for me, then I will not take it. So they need to speak to people because your heart will tell you those who love you and those who do not love you. So they need to speak to people to get advice and know how to go about life. Yeah, that's what I think. You have already started. You have already started. You have to go. Jehovah, where did you get that from? <laughs> um... I think I got it from my mom. My mom looks, she likes looking simple. Um, to ensure marriage, she's simple, elegant, and expensive. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I got it from my mom. I do, I do. Mom, can you